So I've been getting to know Google's fresh new Pixel 7 8 for over a month now and I am very much a fan of this pocket sized beauty. Sure at 449 quids the Pixel 7 8 isn't as affordable as last year's 6a but it's also improved in quite a few areas to the point where it's really bloody hard to actually tell the difference between this and Google's Pixel 7 flagship phone. So is this the ideal alternative blower if you can't afford to spunk up a whole heap of cash on the latest flagships? Well, here's my full Pixel 7a review and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now after spending lots of time with it, the only element of the Pixel 7a's design that I'm not a huge fan of is those chunky bezels surrounding the compact screen. They're not terrible by any means, but they do somewhat detract from an otherwise impressively premium finish. Yes, you do have a placky back here on the Pixel 7a, but it looks every bit as smart as the regular Pixel 7 and feels just as solid too. And you've also got yourself a proper metal frame as well, which extends to the thankfully minimalist camera bump. This barely sticks out at all, so the corners aren't a safe haven for dirt and muck, and glory be, the Pixel 7a doesn't rattle about the place when it's sat on a desk, unlike practically every other blower. You've got the usual bog-standard white and black colour options, but I'm definitely more of a fan of this here subtle blue effort. Although I gotta say, my favourite is still that bright and bold coral model, a Pixel Store exclusive. And some particularly sniffy people may say that colour reminds them of the contents of the toilet bowl when they pass a particularly troublesome kidney stone, but to them I say pish. And not bloody pish, it doesn't look like that much. I also love how the Pixel 7a is refreshingly compact compared with most of the 2023 smartphones. You won't have to squeeze it into your skinny jeans and the mini curvy design feels lovely in the hand. And it's a reasonably hardy bugger too. That placky back has some scuffs around the bottom edge so you will want to slap a case on it if you want to keep it box fresh. But otherwise it's looking very shiny and smart considering all of the abuse it's been through. And yeah that display is protected by the older Gorilla Glass 3 rather than Victus. But even after weeks of being carelessly crammed into pockets and bags with other smartphones and the occasional hip flask there's next to no damage. All I can find are a couple of very small, very light scratches and even then you have to kind of like hold the phone up to the light in just the right way and squint a bit to actually see them. And the Pixel 7a is also IP67 water and dust resistant as well so no worries if you want to enjoy some YouTubes while you're splish splashing about in a bath. Maybe you can enjoy some Uncle Spurred while you buff your bunions, so to speak. And moving on, another highlight of the Pixel 7a is the software. That slick stock Android 13 UI feels creamy smooth when you're zipping around your desktops and poking your way around menus and it's absolutely gushing with brilliant features that you won't find on many other phones. The spam caller alert is still one of my absolute favourites, works a charm complete with the call screen and features so you can actually work out who is calling before you pick up. And you've also got a built-in VPN that does the trick when you want a bit of privacy while Clear Colin does an impressive job of cutting down any background crap when you're trying to have a conversation. Not to mention all of the usual fantastic audio tools like live translate, live transcription, etc, etc. Honestly, there's just so much great stuff packed in here, I could bang on about it all day long. Although, yeah, there still aren't as many customization options as what you get with some other Android launchers. And for instance, you can't remove that bloody search bar from the desktop still if you want to just clear up some of the clutter. No complaints on the security side, Google is promising at least five years of security patching while also storing your privates in a separate Titan M2 chip to keep it all safe. And thankfully pretty much all of the jankiness that I experienced in my first week or two with the Pixel 7a has been kicked square in the crotch, courtesy of a couple of well-timed updates. So no more apps just shutting themselves down because they seemingly can't be arsed anymore. However, I did rather swiftly fill out 128 gigs of storage and with no micro SD support here, I have had to delete some of my downloads to free up space. I guess I'll somehow have to make do with just the 10 gigs of super strength hentai. Sigh. And Google's face unlock has been working a charm too, although I usually stick to the in-display fingerprint sensor, which I've again had sod all trouble with. Now while last year's Pixel 6a dialed down the display tech to a more basic 60Hz panel, there's no compromise with this year's 7a. It's a fully fledged Willy Waver 90Hz GOLED screen just like the regular Pixel 7, except a wee bit smaller. Those compact dimensions combined with a full HD plus resolution means that your photos, your Netflix shows, your illegal hentai videos, they all look gorgeously pin sharp. While the standard HDR10 smarts are present and correct, 
serving up crispy contrast and realistic looking colours. However, I gotta say the Pixel 7a's display isn't the brightest one around by any means. On a sunshiny day, which we've actually had occasionally here in Blighty this past month, I do occasionally struggle to see what is going on on this panel even when I boost that brightness to the maximum levels. I found I could just about check out messages and read websites and such forth, but certainly if you're wearing shades it is a struggle and if you basically live in a hot country, you might want to look elsewhere. No problems with the auto brightness though, that behaved itself perfectly. And also the Pixel 7a's dual speaker arrangement is decent, but it could do with being a bit louder. Even on that max volume, when I was trying to watch something when my kid was in the same room as me, I basically had no chance of following along. You know, she'd be off in the corner doing cartwheels and crashing into stuff and chasing the cats with a pizza cutter and all the dumb stuff that kids love to do. And I'd just be sat there going like, what? Huh? What did that guy just say? Rewind. And then of course just give up and shove in the old earbuds instead. And it's a shame because the audio quality is pretty good from those speakers, but no worries because I had zero issues with the Bluetooth streaming. You got strong codec support, no juddering or other shin diggery. And the Pixel 7 a is also pretty much on par with the Pixel 7 when it comes to the performance. Rock and Google same Tensor G2 chipset as co-manufactured with Samsung. And yes, the question on everyone's lips is, does the Pixel 7 a ever get a bit toasty? Just maybe a wee bit burny. And the answer is yes, it can run a bit hot sometimes, especially when you're using it outdoors in the full glare of the midday sun. It is certainly not a fan of sunshine, much like myself, a bold northerner with less melanin than a f***ing deep sea squid. Thankfully, however, I haven't seen any performance issues on the Pixel 7a when it does heat up, no slowdowns, certainly no hard resets like what I've seen in previous Google flagships. And if anything, in winter, I'd imagine it'll be quite a pleasant hand warmer. If you like to Genshin in your spare time, then you should be reasonably happy with the Pixel 7a's game and prowess. Boost those visuals and you'll still get a reasonably stable frame rate for the most part. Although the phone did start to struggle a little bit when there were several enemies on screen all at once trying to beat the living shit out of me. The screen is responsive and Google's gaming mode is pretty bare bones, but it does offer a couple of useful tools like the notifications blocking. And you've got Wi-Fi 6E support as well as a bit of sub-6 5G action here in Blighty, so connectivity, again, not really a problem. I found my internet connection stayed strong as long as I didn't wander into any like weird dark spots. Now, one of the problems I had with the Pixel 7a in our first week of courtship was the battery life. This thing rarely survived a full day of use thanks to the compact 4385mAh battery wadged inside. After a few days the situation did improve though and thankfully now the Pixel 7a usually lasts me a full day on a single charge, no worries, although I have come sphincter clenchingly close to draining the wee bugger when I've been catching the last train home after being out all evening. You can generally expect around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time from a full charge depending on how much music, podcast etc streaming you're doing in the background when the screen is hibernating. Although that battery does drain alarmingly fast when you are Skyping, Zooming, doing something that's using the cameras. So not the best effort around and certainly if you are a power user who's like never off your smartphone you'll probably want to look at a bigger alternative. And while that 18 watt wired charging is woefully slow compared with some Chinese rivals, at least you do have wireless charging support as well which is still reasonably rare at this sort of price. So last up it's the camera shenanigans and the Pixel 7a rocks a fresh 64 megapixel Sony IMX 787 sensor sat alongside your typical ultra wide angle shooter. This new hardware combined with Google's image processing chops is a solid combo in most circumstances so I was happy enough with the majority of my test photos. The lens does a dependable job of locking onto your subject following an update even if the scene is rather messy while images are impressively lifelike rather than manipulated to look more pleasing to the eye. If it's a sunny day, you'll have to be a little bit careful to avoid any lens flare, but otherwise the Pixel 7a can cope well with harsh backlighting. HDR ain't a problem with blue skies capably captured. Those portrait chops are pretty decent too. This phone can even deal with crazy windswept hair and furry subjects like this wee chap. Ambient snaps can look a little bit soft at times, those textures and facial features can be just a wee bit too smooth, but colours are usually on point and as long as there's no rapid movement then you'll get sharp enough results. My indoor pics had plenty of finer details packed in there. Your manual controls are limited to EV and contrast basically, 
If you want anything more complex than that, then you're gonna have to look at an alternative blower. But those on-screen sliders work really, really well and they can rescue an otherwise murky looking shot. And this comes in handy at times in the evenings, although this blower does a solid job there too. Strong lighting can pose a problem in a night scenario, but otherwise it's all good. We're talking not much noise and a reasonable amount of detail. Now that 13 meg ultra wide angle shooter is another Sony IMX special and photos shot with this are rather consistent. Once again producing natural tones just like the primary shooter, if not quite as much detail. Although unfortunately the distortion is rather bad which heavily distracts. And there's no telephoto shooter here, just like the regular Pixel 7 and pretty much every other mid-ranger you'll find at this sort of price point. So the Pixel 7a is limited to a mere 8x digital zoom. The Pixel 7a can also record up to 4K resolution video and it's certainly fine if not remarkable in this department. Visuals are sharp and well defined as long as you're not shooting in the dark and even in the evenings you'll usually get something that works. That focus still occasionally pops, especially if the lighting sucks, but the stabilization is good enough for moving about and recording, even at that Ultra HD level. Audio capture is also good, as long as the environment isn't too noisy and there's not much wind. And last up, that 13 meg selfie snapper is okay-ish. It's not the worst, but it's pretty bog standard stuff, pumping out soft, bland snaps if the lighting ain't great. If you're obsessed with posting pics of your gun and mug online, you may be swayed by another handset like the Galaxy A54. So that in a nutshell, my lovelies, is my full final frank review of the Google Pixel 7a after spending a month with it. And while it's by no means perfect, it does offer pretty stunning value for money at this sort of price point. It's incredible just how much Google has crammed into this thing for under 500 quid. But those are my thoughts, hey, it'd be great to hear what you guys at home reckon about the Pixel 7a. Are you tempted? Have you already got one? Let us know down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.